All right, so uh, I guess we're recording now. All right. I'm going to be making sure to record in a good sitting posture. Good sitting posture. Yes. So that you can become the princess of posture. Obviously. Obviously. What else is there to be? Yeah, we were watching MST3K shorts for the last hour. Uh, Mystery Science Theater. <laughs> yeah. For those of you who don't know the jargon. But for the uninformed. The uninitiated. <laughs> yeah. The uninitiated. Oh, man. The best American TV show of all time. Oh, definitely. Yeah, easily. There's, there's some really good bad films out there. Oh, baby. <laughs> oh, oh. So what do we got this week? Uh, we're all... To see, uh, the Owl. Yes, uh, the Owl. Hazel, uh, right? Hazel. Hold on, I'm going to pull up my phone, because that's a hard name to remember. The last name, it's like... Mc, Mc, uh, it's no, it's like Ukaban. U- Ukaban? Yeah, it means Owl. Right. Yeah, it means owl in uh, Irish. And yeah, you're right, it is Wukabon. Yeah, I remember everything. Damn, yeah. good for you. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Right. Uh, oh yeah, Hazel Wukabon, yeah. the head mistress of the uh, Arcane School. The Arcane University, something yeah. we don't have a name for the school No, yet. God, no. But it does fly in the sky, and it's right. a sweet castle built around a giant flying tree. Yes. So that's pretty gangster. Yeah, that's some uh, fantasy shit. Yeah, we've, sure. uh, we've been doing a lot of uh, uh, what's sort of brainstorming on fantasy lore uh, for this book we're working on uh, that goes with the Raven Queen and this um, uh, Hazel character. Yeah, I'm going to start the video. Um, so, obviously, this is you just getting ready, cheating, as yeah. always. As always, me working on the... Uh, uh, God, what am I talking about? Like, you know, like the... The math. The math portion of it. The actual, mm-hmm. like, mapping everything out to make sure everything's in the rule of thirds. Like the that. old masters. Just like the old masters. You know, it's tragic. Like we didn't get masters. to film with Vincent, speaking of rule of thirds. It's true. It's Master true. was too busy doing Valentine's with his family. Oh, uh, disgusting. Wife and kids. God, like a normal person. Uh, disgusting. Just absolutely awful. How could he? How could he? Vincent, if you're well, out he there... Was out, he was out celebrating because of Mr. Peanut's demise. That's true. But he doesn't have to worry about the sun as much. He's still tiny. Yeah. I think. Unless he's grown up in a new commercial. I don't I know. Seen I couldn't tell you. It's I creepy. don't know. Did you see the picture online someone made where it was of, uh, you know, the painting where it's yeah, yeah, Saturn yeah. eating the sun? sun yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah that <laughs> what was, was Mr. Great. Peanut? Yeah, that yeah, was good. That was good. Um, but no, the uh, still Vincent, uh, Vincent America missing out on. Uh, we'll have to get. We need to get some guests on here. Yeah. It'll be fun. So I think so, at least. Yeah, so it looks like we're starting here. So this uh, came about because you wanted to draw the Raven Queen again. Yes, but a bit in a more simple uh, look in a different pose, and I'm like. No, that's dumb. Just make this a new character. Yeah, I can't remember what birds... You said swans, and I said I think owls would be better. Yeah, well, I was thinking, yeah, I didn't know what we were going for. And I had, like, a different idea for somebody maybe with swans. Yeah. And then you said owls, and I'm like, dude, owls are fucking cool. Yeah, owls are so, cool. <laughs> Someone described it me... fit the book. Or, no, this book wasn't in the picture originally. Yeah. It was uh, added in. We... With, like, making the skull, like, the thing that holds yeah. the book up. Yeah, they were just going to be looking into a skull. Yeah, I remember also, yeah, uh, I also remember something about the owl thing, too, is just funny, because owls are, you know, always these symbols of wisdom and things like that, and they're very pretty to look at, but they're actually these, like, menacing little oh, yeah. fucking devils. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Swoop in in the night and yeah. just murder. This face looks really good, even just sketched out. Yeah, I looked at a lot of different um, uh, faces for reference on this one. Uh, cheating, right? Obviously. Obviously cheating. More in his cheating repertoire. But yeah, you should see his cheating folder on his phone. It's disgusting. It's got tons is. of cheating images. Yeah, I mean, hey man, you gotta reference some things. Yeah, right. <laughs> Once it, next, you know, you're starting a picture drawing some owls, and you're like, what the fuck does an owl even look like? Yeah, I haven't even seen an owl once. <laughs> Not in real life, at least. Um, and I, it's Not the since zoo. the zoo, yeah. yeah. But, Actually, no, I did see a tiny owl on someone's car when we were at the townhouse. Really? They were less than a foot tall. They were this tiny, cute little owl. It's yeah. adorable. Yeah, I used to have a picture of that. A tiny marshmallow filled with vile evil. <laughs> yeah, tiny little marshmallow owl. Yeah, um, but yeah, no, my, my personal thing I want to talk about mainly is the book itself, because we've been having a lot of fun coming up with lore and things like that. Like, man, you should have you should have been there last night for our jam session. Oh, yeah. We were just talking about, we're like... talking about an upcoming uh, uh, picture that we're going to have with, like, a legendary blacksmith. Right. And all their weapons. Yeah, and all the weapons had to have lore as well, so mm-hmm. we were thinking about what kind of... Uh, oh, this is where you're drawing the, like, spirit hands yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Uh, kind of lore these... Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, weapons would have and naming them was a lot of fun because we got to look up in a lot of Celtic mythos mm-hmm. uh, things of that nature I like uh, I'm a big fan of uh, looking up uh, 
history and definitely uh, looking up uh, mythos and legends and things like that. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. Yeah, symbolism is always very interesting when it comes oh, yeah. to uh, uh, our conceived notions of things. Like, why do we think owls are a symbol of wisdom when you know mm-hmm. they're not really all that wise in reality? Yeah, uh, it's interesting, but yeah, I don't know, but. This has been a really fun project for me, mostly just because of the fact um, I get to flex on like doing more along the lines of what I like doing, which is fantastical, weird, uh, magical things, um, more in the realms of uh, medieval fantasy, or mm-hmm. uh, coming up with new ideas and lore for worlds is always, I think, the fun part. Of, it's the really fun part. Of Everyone any, loves coming yeah. up with a story. Yeah, especially when it comes to making world building and stuff like that. Usually mm-hmm. my, my least favorite part usually ends up being, um, well, I don't know, like... The part at the end. Oh, you drew. I remember you drew that owl to the side, yeah, and we yeah. decided to get rid of it later. Yeah. Um, I think my least favorite part probably is... And this is where we're working on some like alternate ideas for like hands. Mm-hmm. I think there's like try to figure out if we want to change the outfit some too at some point yeah i think my least favorite part though is like all the mundane like mm-hmm. um i don't know like the most mundane part i think is the actual execution of a lot of the stuff oh yeah that's how it always is uh when it, it's like yeah that's when you decide to add like an extra sleeve or something or an extra little poof yeah like nah it's not working but yeah mundane i don't know like yeah the actual execution of everything seems to always be a little bit more mundane yeah, like this when, face comes out really good too. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to watch this again. I also like that uh, everyone is not white. Oh yeah, no, I'm tired. Of that. I just hate that shit so goddamn. Yeah, much. like it was funny we were watching all those '50s uh, videos, and I was like, man, where are all the fucking black people? <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. <laughs> like, where is everybody? <laughs> Only white people in these videos. It's weird. Yeah, right. And then you're like, oh, yeah, it's the, the 50s. 50s. Yeah. <laughs> Jokingly, would be like, oh, right, they didn't invent those yet. Yeah, right. They didn't invent them for media. They yeah. hadn't discovered they could be filmed. Yeah. <laughs> it's terrible. Oh, it's so bad. It's disgusting. Oh, oh, American history. Um, yeah, like, yeah, I always hate the fact that there's this. Because, like, I get bored looking at all the same things in fantasy over and over again. Definitely. I, I feel like, you know, you can only draw the same European stylings at like, the same time over and over again yeah. for only so long. And then you're just like, hey, you do know that there's other cultures out there you can, uh, you know, reference and uh, put into fantasy, too, right? Yeah, right. Like, I know that we were talking about with the Smith, we wanted to do those Indian... Um, <laughs> I'm just gonna call them Valdo swords. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't actually. I don't know the ter- I don't know the t- I don't know the term for them either. Yeah, I just we're just because we were looking up weird weapons from uh, uh, you know uh, around the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but, ancient weapons. Yeah, and but the, the, it didn't fit the composition, so we axed them. But I mean, like that stuff's crazy. Like, yeah. who thought of that? Like, what person said? You know, we need to make our knuck- like punching stronger. Put fucking swords. On sword them. punching. And sword punching. Yeah. Sword punching. That's a sick idea. Yeah, I'm like, punch someone with a sword. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna punch him with a sword. Yeah, like who the punch fuck just like says? That's yeah, amazing. That's, that's a great idea. You got Toshi. You've done it again. I woke up one day and thought, I'm gonna punch someone with a sword. Yeah, let's get this money. <laughs> yeah, because like yeah, you don't uh, you don't see that in many like medi- like European medieval things. I mean, I don't think Judeo Christianity would have thought to punch somebody with a sword. Yeah, right. That seems like something the infidel would do. <laughs> um, that's great. But yeah, like, I don't know, like, fantasy is always so fascinating because uh, you can grab from literally any part of history. Uh, yeah, you can do you can do a lot of what you want. Yeah. It's really fun. And then um, referencing it, too, is just because um, reality is always really important when you want to make fantasy more believable. Yeah, you want to start with, like, it's kind of, um, oh, what is it? When they were making Back to the Future 2 and they went to the future, mm-hmm. the way they did it was... They had to do a certain number of things that would be from today before they could add one futuristic thing. Mm. So even though there's a lot of futuristic stuff, if you look, there's still way more things that are recognizable. Right. Because if you just decide to make it crazy, weird future that doesn't make any sense, the audience doesn't have anything to connect to. Exactly. I mean, so like, if you do it with fantasy like that, where you still have a lot of things grounded in reality and then add fantastical layers on top of them people are able to you can kind of jump into it yeah you can feel it a lot better i feel like that's how some of the better 
one or more popular recent ones are and things like that like harry potter and you know, yeah a lot of real world and then they throw on some magic i think because that was like that that. That, sh- that that series is more um urban fantasy a little bit yeah it takes I, it's like, not, i don't feel like it's fully urban fantasy though well, i feel like urban that. fantasy is much more like supernatural or something i guess you know? the reason why i say urban fantasy is because towards the end of the series they take a lot, a place a lot more in. Oh yeah, outside of outside Hogwarts. of Hogwarts in the in the Muggle world. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and you see a lot more of like magic being used amongst reality yeah. and things like that. So, or like even in the very first book, whenever it's like, oh, there's the secret world that's in between mm-hmm. your world and the rea- uh, your reality and what's actual fantastical, and that's technically a staple of uh, urban fantasy. Yeah, that's true. Mm. But. Uh, Again, that's probably just... I don't know, yeah, I'm yeah, not a genre expert. Yeah, genre... Like fantasy. God, genres are so dumb sometimes, too. Yeah, they can uh, get... Because, yeah. like, you know, you're like, oh, The yeah. infinite dissection and classification. Look, like, at this point, you're splitting hairs, you know? Yeah, it's like, really funny. Just call it fantasy. But, yeah, no, I really think um, grounding things in reality is a very good way to keep things, you know, um, in check and making sure that you're able to keep your uh, readership and, yeah, uh, involved. for sure. If you're like, thinking about making anything fantasy, you should start with something real. Because this outfit that she's wearing is an actual outfit that exists in reality. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, my sans some of the owl bird details that I added to it. And, yeah. Uh, and our, uh, uh, I guess galaxy star things that will be on our sleeves in a little bit later in the mm-hmm. film. Um, but no, it's still based on a real dress. Though I actually don't think the dress goes down that long. No, either. I think it was more like kind of a coat or something. Yeah, I think it was more of a coat. Either way, like though, that. it's still referencing to something that's real and exists in the world. Mm-hmm. As as good as I am at character and costume design, I still do a lot of research when it comes to outfits to make sure that they, you know, would be something that would be in this world. You yeah. To, it's also like uh, thinking about like, oh, you know, this person's poor. Well, why do they have such nice clothing? Yeah, things like that that yeah. have to match the character. Yeah. Not just the way they look, you know. Like, they want, you can add stuff to about the character. It's funny, Things though, like too, that. is uh, whenever I think about the how much I kind of go really hardcore into war on some stuff, mm-hmm. uh, I'm now always thinking because of that episode of One Fantastic Week uh, where they said, like, I don't know, people are talking about how you have to have the mating rituals and yeah. like, all this stuff for these animals. I just say, oh, it's like a it's like a dog, but fucked up. <laughs> yeah. But, like, I still, like, and I'm, like, thinking, like, am I, when I heard that, I was like, am I, am I doing too much? <laughs> why, yeah. Why thinking about these things, like, this character's poor, why do they have such a nice outfit? Or, oh, this outfit needs to be, you know, uh, something that actually exists in reality, therefore, you know, people can relate to it or uh, mm-hmm. and then just fuck it up a bit. But why, uh, why did I, you know, choose this outfit in particular? It's like, oh, this looks like, you know, a magical outfit. And that's yeah, basically it just it. looks good. You don't need a complicated reason to do things, I think. Yeah, but sometimes I feel like complicated stuff is important. Um, you just, I don't know. Like, I feel like you need to have a good mix of complicated reasoning and simple reasoning of yeah. just because. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because a lot of the time it's like, you'll ask someone, well, why are they doing this? They'll say, like, because I like it. Yeah. You know, that's it. Why does someone wear the clothes they wear? Usually because they like them. Yeah. Or they have a specific function, like a coat, you know, it keeps you warm. You know, right. Things like that. Like, I like the, because uh, we were talking about, um, there's another of a race of people, or not even a race, uh, they're just you, the mountain people. Oh, yeah, yeah. In, in this uh, world, we have a, a clan of mountain tribe people that um, f- uh, hunt these giant lizards and mm-hmm. then use the lizards for pretty much every part of their culture. Um and apparently the lizard blood has properties that have magic in them. Mm-hmm. Uh, the magic being able to, like, you know, harden their bodies yeah. or, like, give them, like, strength. And for that, you'd be like, well, they, if they're going to be using that for uh, hunting, fighting, things like that, mm-hmm. uh, you would need to give them outfits that appropriate that yeah. uh, sort of magic ability. Mm-hmm. And so that's why... Yeah, they see... wouldn't need heavy armor because they can have iron skin. Yeah, exactly. So Which is uh, to say... This is my excuse to draw scantily clad men and women. Oh, obviously. 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 Men in some banana hammocks, women yeah. in some bikini, chainmail bikinis. Oh, easily. 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 Yeah. I mean, honestly, at this point, you know, maybe we should just cut out the middleman and make them all fight nude. Yeah, done. Done. Honestly. Honestly. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... Honestly, the chain of bikini is a coward's way out. It's true. You should just fight naked at just this point. Just fight naked, yeah. I mean, naked. to be fair, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's there to help lift and support. Better. Right. <laughs> and the banana hammocks there also to keep them to just yeah. everything. 
<laughs> flopping it away. <laughs> Keeps it more aerodynamic. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to be flopping on the battlefield. That's true. <laughs> you don't want to get your swords crossed on the battlefield. <laughs> it's not going to be a good time. Honestly, I think it's just there to keep them from being distracted while they hunt. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I was trying to kill the lizard, but, you know, Johnny's dick was out, and I just got distracted because it's, you know, such a nice dick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you know, if, uh, <laughs> you do have to like kind of think of, um, you, you can't just sometimes just do just because. Yeah, so I really like how this hand came out. Oh, it yeah. It so cool, yeah, with this like quill and everything. Yeah, I'm a big fan of this one too, mainly just because of the fact it's so um, elegant in a way. Yeah, it really is. It's They're all, very simple. It's a very smooth piece is what it is. I feel mm -hmm. like I like because it's like, uh, there's not really any hard edges on this character. Yeah. Um, in fact, any, I don't think. There's no really... There's, like, only, like, two sharp corners on her crown. Mm -hmm. uh, but the rest of her is pretty soft, if you think about it. That's probably why she's such an inviting character. Yeah, because it looks like you just kind of walked in on her. Yeah. Know? Like, she was like, oh. Hello there. I was reading, but... Hello. You know? I was reading to my owls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we'll still I'm reading about the mystical and the mundane. <laughs> yeah. So... Oh my gosh, that reminds me, speaking of, we were talking about this in the car the other day, um, for character design, mm -hmm. um, about how character designs nowadays usually tend to uh, lend themselves to be... Oh, no, 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 we don't need to bring up that. Oh, you should, I mean, come on, it's, it's, I, think it's a, I think it's just an interesting... We were talking about character design, <laughs> so I think it's something that, you know, it pertains to, you know, today's culture. <laughs> Is my, my dissertation, fuckability in the modern era. Yeah, your dissertation, <laughs> fuckability in the modern era. Oh, I just God. think, well, I'm just saying, like, that's something that comes up a lot in character design now, because a lot of people who uh, consume media are kind of like, at least in the, we go to a lot of anime conventions and things like that, and a lot of people are like either A, looking for their son, Yeah. Looking, no one ever says their daughter, though. Yeah, uh, although I'm kind of glad. That feels like it would be weirder for some reason. Well, I mean, if a chick says it, it's fine. Uh, I don't know. Like, it's a little sexist. Maybe? I mean, that's, that's, like, that's, that's, I mean, I'm being cynical, but that's, that seems to be the case in that regard. I don't think I've ever heard anyone say that. I mean, usually they say my child, if it's, yeah, a, if they usually it, just say child. Well, I mean, they always just say son or child, they never say daughter. Yeah. Regardless. That or a husband, or husband, husbando, uh, which is not as good as gaifu. Yeah. Or uh, waifu. Yeah, and I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. Um, it's very weird. Yeah, but... Like, that all leads into the idea that most characters are designed to be attractive in a way that makes you either A, want to protect them, mm -hmm. or B, want to fuck them, <laughs> you know? Yeah. There's not really much in between. Yeah. It's kind of weird. Yeah, it's very bizarre, because we were talking about, too, like, the characters from Chrono Trigger. Oh, no. Don't. Why are we bringing this well, up? <laughs> no, I think it's interesting, because it's talking about character design, how character design has changed over time. It's true. It's and true. We don't even have to bring up the fuckability aspect of it. It's I'm true. just saying that character designs seem to be very different from... Yeah. Um, when they were, you know, in the 90s, yeah. 80s. As it's mostly. also a curatoriama, so... Right, of course, yeah. but, like, I'm just saying, like, what mm -hmm. uh, character designs uh, in general seem to have changed a lot over the decade. That's true. Of uh, what seems to be the thing that they look for in, in a character. Yeah, characters do feel generally a little softer, maybe? I would say softer, yeah. Yeah. Uh, definitely... Well, this is when you're drawing all the cool magic shit in the yeah. book. Yeah, this is sweet. The, definitely, I would agree that they're all a lot softer. Mm -hmm. Softer for sure. Um, not as many hard lines. Also, the colors palettes chosen nowadays are a lot more. Um, uh, I mean, to be fair, we have a lot more colors to access now. Mm -hmm. But I feel like the colors that are chosen for character designs these days are a lot softer as well, more uh, pastel-y, yeah, more uh, poppy, uh, mm -hmm. more colorful. We uh, and that does come with the territory of the fact we now have a lot more color yeah. at, at our fingertips. Back in the mm -hmm. day, you had very little color. Oh, this is where you realize you drew the wing. Yeah. <laughs> so you skip that owl for later. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I know. It's because I just drew uh, what I remembered a wing to look like. That, yeah. See, that's what that's happens where when you reference. That's yeah. why you always reference is because... Because you, you also wanted it to follow the shape of the hair. Exactly. Expanding. Yeah. And uh, again, back to realism and reference. Yes. That is not how things work within reality. Yeah, this yeah. is you redrawing it. Yeah. Because it bends backwards. Yep. So it's very important that the... Whenever you do these things to get reference, also mm -hmm. just that was my toe. <laughs> oh man, okay. yeah. 
But uh, I think it's important to get reference on these sorts of things. But yeah, it's true, though. But this character is very soft in general as well, because there's a lot of soft curves. Mm -hmm. uh, she's very good uh, as an antithesis of that Raven Queen. Yeah. Because uh, that Raven Queen had a lot of harsh lines, a lot of mm -hmm. harsh shapes, uh, a lot of more angles, things like that. Yeah. And definitely it works, like, yeah, because, you know, she's... She's the headmistress, you know, but I feel like she's more of a open and inviting kind of character. Of course, yeah. yeah. I'm just saying that it's in it also goes back to, like, character design uh, mm -hmm. with, like, things like that. I mean, like, Disney character design, whenever they do villains, um, they always make them more angled. Yeah. Uh, they're sharp. They're a lot less um, mm -hmm. huggable. Yeah. That's an easy way to help distinguish your characters. Yeah. If you want to just straight up, person can look at your character and determine if they're a villain or a good guy, and you don't even have to worry about the, like, the facial expression, you know, you can yeah. just have them in a normal kind of look. Which is also interesting, too. Stuff like that. Um, what is it? Because uh, I remember we were, we had a, back in high school, uh, there was this, we were talking about character uh, designs, and how, like, uh, our mind kind of tends to make the old ugly hag the villain. Yeah. Um, where in actuality, the old ugly hag might be the hero, and the mm -hmm. pretty boy might be the villain. Yeah. Uh, and I think that... That's why that's usually, like, if a character is in disguise, they'll yeah. be disguised old, and yeah. things like that, too. That's... Because you'll look kind of down on them. Right. Like that. Uh, it just makes me think of, um... I don't know, like, because anime did that a lot for me, too, where it was like, I don't know, they're pretty, they're probably evil. Yeah. <laughs> Which is so weird. Um, yeah. He can't be the villain, Mr. Silk Honest. He's, he's wearing, wearing white. white. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> things like that, too, because that's when you get starting to get into those concepts of, uh, what is it? Um, trope break. Trope, trope breaking, breaking yeah, breaking, breaking tropes. And yeah. things like that. That's what I was looking That's, for. it's all about the old classic Western, uh, white hats versus black hats. Yes. Things like that. Right. Since American media influenced so much of, uh. You know, uh, just world film and things like very that. Very much so. Um, it's very interesting concept of character design and uh, mm -hmm. all the things that go into it. Because uh, a lot of times when I was making... When, first of all, when I designed this character, I wasn't really thinking too much about whether or not they were a villain or a hero. or I kind of just yeah. thought they were, you know, just a normal person in the sense yeah. of the world. And I don't think they're really a villain or a hero either. Yeah. They're there. They're just, yeah, they're somebody who exists in this world. Because a lot of the things th uh, that we decided on when we were working on this world is that we didn't really want uh, there to be full-on concrete villains, full-on mm -hmm. concrete heroes. It was just that this is a world that exists, and um, there these are the people that live in it. Yeah. And in reality, um, like this goes back to, you know, understanding reality of fantasy and putting yeah. it in there. In reality, a lot of the things that uh, come up are not usually clear-cut, uh, black and white. Yeah. There's lots of shades of gray. There's lots of things going on you, yeah. that you just don't understand. Most, most people are not thinking I'm going to be maliciously evil. Right. And that's why I'm doing this thing that other people would say is very evil. Exactly. So we want to try to... Con uh, so that's why I think when I go at these characters, I try not to think about them being like uh, good or bad. I kind of just think of them like, oh, they exist. Yeah, that's definitely a good and way they to put it. And they have a role to fill. Yeah, so uh, this is where we're deciding on what to do with that extra owl, yeah. I think. Like the, even the Raven Queen, who looks kind of evil, is actually not very evil. She's just in control of fate, yeah. in control of um, making sure that, you know... She's not evil, she's just trying to do her job. Yeah, the natural order of things is, you know, things have to eventually die. Mm -hmm. And, therefore, while we kind of think of the concept of death as a very evil thing, mm -hmm. it's actually not, it's part of, a, it's part of reality. Yeah. There's like silence because we're just watching it. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's so cool. Oh, man. Though it is pretty funny though because mm -hmm. I say that there's no evil, but I remember we were talking about how like one of the characters who was obviously a very religious figure to oh. be more antagonistic. Yeah, <laughs> that, that goes. To... Well, they're more they're more antagonistic with this character. Cause yeah, it's kind of like they see things from the divine and like a the... lot of this kind of magic draws itself from natural things from the world, like the tree the. Uh, university we're talking about it's a floating tree yeah all the magicians from that get their power from the fruit from this tree right exactly and magic and is uh, other parts of it like the bark and the roots and yeah magic like in this world is very a much more limited resource and yeah and there's different ways to get it there's not one source to get magic from and right that's kind of part of what makes all the factions quote unquote of the you know just the people different is yeah they all get something differently experience magic and magic in life in a different way that's you know not 
the same as everyone else. It's yeah. Very much like real life. Yeah. Again, going back to yeah. morality and fantasy. Everyone has a different experience, you know. Every yeah. culture has a different origin and things like that. Yeah. Um, not to get uh, to break away from that really important topic, but uh, one thing I want to talk about with the actual like process, what we're doing here is. Mm -hmm. So what I did is um, I after I scanned in the line art, I printed it off on eleven by seventeen uh, and put it underneath uh, uh, some watercolor paper, and I'm using this light box here to help me um, kind of do the coloring that's going to go on the piece mm -hmm. on a separate sheet of paper. That way I don't really mess up the line art or mess up the watercolor itself uh, and have a very good idea of where everything's supposed to be in the terms of the lighting, coloring, and all that stuff. Plus, I didn't really want to, um, quote-unquote, ruin the line art. Yeah, right. Because, uh, like, you know, watercolor is very permanent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Coloring uh, traditionally is a very permanent thing. So mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I have... Um, there's no control Z in real life. Yes, there's no control Z in real life. So yeah. I wanted to make sure that I, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, you know, covered all my bases, made sure that I have the mm -hmm. least amount of chance of ruining a good piece. So I decided to do it on a separate sheet of paper. And now you see here is uh, me working with the light box, getting all the coloring in and, um, you know, watercoloring to the best of my ability uh, yeah. to get uh, capture the uh, under layer that is going to be the color. Mm -hmm. I think that was a good idea because it turned out really well. Yeah, because I do this all the time too. I mean, I, I've done it before with other pieces where I just do a very vague background. Vague background. Yeah, you saw that in the Raven Queen. Right, as well time. as uh, with and most of the other fan art pieces that I've done in the past. This is the first time I've been like, oh, I need to you know go into heavy detail and make yeah. sure that I am like you know full like getting every single bit, every little piece, every little uh, mm -hmm. shade of this character. Um, uh, this is actually kind of uh, related to comics in a way. Is, um, David Masichelli's wife, I can't remember her name. Last name is Lewis, though. Mm. Um, she uh, did the coloring for the volume re-release of Batman mm -hmm. Year One. Oh, okay. Uh, and she's a uh, interior design, graphic design background. Okay. So all the coloring she did is actually hand-painted. Oh, that's cool. And uh, patterns, stuff like that, mm -hmm. um, or stuff that she just had lying around from wallpaper, stuff that she used to work on. Oh, I like that. Um, but what she did is she did something similar to this, where she took all of the original uh, line art. Uh, that's but it's a little easier for her because the line art in uh, back in the day is done on clear vellum paper, oh, you said, so yeah. uh, they can actually just you know, yeah, you know, was like kind of animation wise, flip it up and down and kind of mm -hmm. look at it. But yeah, but all of those colors are uh, hand painted. Uh, and that's why it looks so good. Is that's pretty sweet. Um, it's because of all the additional work that was done. Because back in the day when that comic first came out, um, that was when I think, I feel like there was only like 26 colors that could be printed that, during that time yeah, period. Yeah, something like that. Um, some of the, before. Something along those lines, like 26, they might have had 32. I can't remember uh, what time period um, this was printed in off the top of my head. I'd have to look it up, and I'm not going to look it up. Uh, but, you know, limited color palette, so the comic is, you know... A product of its time but now that it's been republished you can do a lot of different stuff because all mm -hmm. the new colors that came out and being able to use so they decided to do this technique where you know they painted underneath it and then they added all these cool effects and things like that and made mm -hmm. it a lot more uh, muted tones and you got to see all these really cool um, ways to look at the book as opposed to back when it was first being printed that's pretty cool because you know color is very important when it comes to uh, oh yeah media. obviously uh, yeah, the whole it, world's in color yeah. right Especially with comics, though, I feel it's very good because you want to be able to set moods, um, mm -hmm. be able to do these. Because uh, comics, you have to have, sometimes have scenes at night and they're just really yeah. miserable to color. But now that you have more colors to use, you can do things like that. Mm -hmm. but, uh, just a small digression on the topic of mm -hmm. character design and reality and all that crap. Yeah, I like the colors. I really like the color on that hand. The, the, the which spirit hand? The spirit hand. Yeah, spirit hand. That color is really. I this wasn't... does look really cool when it's just the watercolors like this. Yeah, and isn't it though? It's very the interesting. owls are very ethereal. Yeah, it's interesting to see because uh, I kind of at one point was like, maybe I'll just scrap the line part and just have the, the watercolor. But uh, I feel like you get a lot of cool stuff yeah. with the watercolor as well as with the uh, line art. No, your well. line art is too good. Your line art is the best part of your art, usually, in my opinion. That's fair. It's Wait. so well done. Uh, but yeah, now this is, uh, this is probably was my favorite part was doing the, this little extra coloring stuff using mm -hmm. watercolor. Yeah, I see you like smudging it with your finger and 
and stuff. Yeah, to get some more texture. Yeah, pro pro strats. Yeah, use your fingers. Pro people. strats, smudge. There's Think a reason they teach you to finger paint. In first, yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> but um, we were well, we were still on character design earlier, right? Yeah, we were. We can go to something else if we want. But. Sure, but I yeah, I think uh, character design is still very important. To us. Definitely, yeah. Also, what's funny though is uh, so I'm working on this thing here too, and the uh, the only mm -hmm. downside to this this method that I use is that after I finished um, coloring it and then scanning it in, the bottom part of the dress needed a bit of extra help digitally. Oh yeah, because of the tape. Yeah, because the tape over the bottom. Yeah, yeah, I taped over the bottom. And I didn't realize that um, you taped over it so far. Yeah, yeah. Oops, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what the clone tool is for. And that thanks. Thank God for the clone tool. Thank God Thanks. for digital editing. Yeah, yeah. You know, that one guy, maybe that one guy's right. Maybe digital art is the, the superior art form. <laughs> way of the future. Way the way of the future. <laughs> the future is now. Oh, man. I, I, we, for uh, reference on what that joke is about, there's somebody that we've seen in Artist Alley who, um, who has uh, been notorious for being kind of a, uh, a jerk. Yeah. Uh, no, nah, let's not talk too ill about it. Oh, no, I'm not going to talk too but... ill. I just think it's just funny when someone like just goes out of the way to say such an oh, absolute... Yeah. Uh, you're saying well, that. only a Sith deals in absolutes. <laughs> only a Sith. <laughs> Which I love because that is an absolute. Yes, I know. That is right. just a testament to that script. <laughs> That's just such a terrible fucking... Oh, oh my God. God. God you know, it's the, beautiful. Right? But you know, I'm just saying, like, whenever mm -hmm. someone deals like an absolute like that, it's just like saying things like uh, that digital art is the superior art form. Anyone who does traditional art is not good. Yeah, that's a bit much. That's like a that's a really blanket statement that I'm like, okay, you calm, calm down, you know. Yeah, like let's calm down here. And let's, let's let's come back to reality, maybe. Let's you know, what the goes grabbing. But yeah, yeah. Things, like things like that. So, uh, so we jokingly will sometimes make references to that. Oh yeah, definitely. Where it's like, oh look at this, I use traditional art. That must mean I'm really bad. Yeah. Right. Or like that, uh, or even one fantastic week where they said like, don't you can't you believe that this person's such a bad artist? They don't yeah, even they, well render their pieces. They don't even finish it as a full rendered painting. Yeah. You know, they just drew it. You know. Can you believe what a hack? Can you believe that? What a hack. What a hack Van Gogh was. Oh man, it's so true. Well, that was a little shaky. I should have edited that out. Yeah, that's fine. Oh yeah, well. Um. Yeah. No, I think. Uh, like it's very I, I i feel whenever it comes to like art it doesn't really matter as long as the piece ends with like you know i guess looking good yeah if you like what you made then that's good enough i mean if you're trying to sell it that's a little different yeah you know um you got a lot of other factors to consider but in general if you just want to make art just do it it's a pretty being creative is a surprisingly important part of being human yeah like everyone a... has a urge to be creative in some way it's I, just part of being human. Yeah, I think I remember they were talking about, like, there's, like, always a lot of these studies and stuff like that that talk about if you do, like, art and things like that, it helps reduce stress, mm -hmm. makes you feel better as a human being, you know? Yeah, and art's a really big umbrella. So yeah. So art covers everything from writing to dance to drawing. To gunpowder. Yeah, gunpowder art. Dude, yeah. where's that guy going to get a table? I know, right? I want to see him again. Yeah, we met this guy at a convention who was like, yeah, we're just a bunch of hicks, man. We're just hanging out, like, you know, blowing up shit with gunpowder. Like, you can make pictures with this? Yeah, they had, like, sick gunpowder art. Yeah, they were, asking, just... they were asking around if they thought it was, you know, a thing that could be, you know, monetized. Sold, yeah. yeah, like, put at a table if people would get it. I'm like, dude, it's Texas. Yeah, it's, it's Texas. Texas. The second you tell them it's made from a gun, it's, <laughs> it's you know, they're going to be like, oh, shit, it's going right next to my gun. <laughs> Here's my gun collection, and here's my gun art collection. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> this was made with a fifty five. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, That's great. Uh, yeah, no, and then we talked, I remember we had talked to him, he was talking about experimenting with other forms of explosives, uh, mm -hmm. in the sense of, uh, there's different, uh, apparently types of gun. Chemicals and stuff. Chemicals you can and... You mix chemicals and powders and they make different colors. Yeah, they blow like up and do things. It's cool. Yeah, that's really cool. I was like, man, that's fucking metal. Oh, Shit. it's so metal. Damn. And I was like, man, I'm kind of jealous. I didn't think of that. <laughs> yeah, right. Quick, to the ammo store. <laughs> right? I mean, sexist. You don't even have to show them an ID. Yeah, right. You can just go rock right in and be like, hey, I would like to get a gun. They're like, okay, Let's all right. Let's go to the gun show. Here's your, gun, here's your free gun and then your beer. <laughs> <laughs> Only time you buy a beer, you get a gun. Oh, I love it. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh little faux Texas. Right. This was fun, too, was doing this little, like, kind of weird, uh, ethereal... Magic Owl, like, color palette, just mm -hmm. kind of just going at it. That's fun. This is just a fun piece in general. Yeah, it came out so well. Man, does it look good. 
it's really fun to watch this. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I, I'm really excited for this this uh, series in general, just because I kind of like like the idea of doing more concept illustration work. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also just coming up with lore and things like that is just a lot of fun too. Um, and then like doing scenes with it, and then having like little blurbs that go next to it, as opposed to full blown scripts and things like that. It's yeah. a lot. It's a lot less. It's a lot less strenuous on me. A cool thing that I've heard from one fantastic week that a bunch of artists do is, um, so when they bag and board the pictures, on the back of it, they have a story about the picture. Oh, that's kind of cool. It'll be on the back of the back of board. I got to do that. I remember uh, Annie was doing that. That's right. Annie was doing that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, That's something that we can probably do once we get more uh, lore written out for the series. Yeah. You just have to have them pre-boarded. That yeah, is the issue. I mean, we're getting so we'll get there eventually. I, I yeah, pray to God. It's not the most common thing to do at anime. Comics. Oh shit, he's breaking out the whiteout. Then... Yeah, right. This is where the lighting starts to go nuts because yeah. we filmed in a basement. <laughs> Pretty That's much. what I usually say. It's just well, because we're I, filming in Saddam Hussein's it, spider cave. <laughs> right. Well, no, it's not like it's a basement. It's just that we always film at night. Yeah, that too. Yeah, night. The yeah. windows closed. Not even the moonlight can come. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I have a job. You know. No, I don't. It's funny. No, whenever you do get the whiteout pen, that's when it's about to go down. Yeah. That's one of the best things you ever bought. Tell me about it. Oh, yeah. now, now we're, we're digital. digital. Now, now you get to watch the all important of me trying to mess around and, you know. Yeah. Figure out how to, <laughs> how to fix all, the bottom of this. How to align this shit. Yeah. This yeah. This is uh, me getting rid of the blue pencil line. Mm-hmm. Uh, secret technique passed down from comic artist to comic artist. Yeah. Yeah. And me realizing, oh no, the wings are going to get cut off. Yeah. But I don't mind. I think it's fine if they're cut off. Yeah, it actually worked out pretty well. Yeah. I like stuff like that when it goes off the picture a little bit. I think. Yeah, I thought it was nice just because it also helps, um, what's the word, um, solidify the composition. Mm-hmm. Like, um, there's not any weird, awkward space between the, the, the edges. The edges. Yeah. Yeah, that was us trying to figure it out. Yeah, there mm-hmm. we go. And then this is when we brought in the watercolor and, and trying to line it up. And I realized, oh no, I randomly forgot that this is set to grayscale. Why is this set to grayscale? <laughs> yeah. Now, oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah, then I was like, oh. No, uh, because like, no, like, I saw that, I was like, wait, what the heck? Where's the rest of it? Yeah. <laughs> that can't be hit. Yeah. yeah no, there was a lot of me effing around with this, because this is just... Yeah, uh, trying to line the eyes up and yeah. everything. Me trying to make it bigger... Uh, this is probably, I can, I can remember, I remember very vividly, this was a good 15 minutes of my life. <laughs> yeah. Just trying very hardly to get this to work. It matched up surprisingly well, though, once you got it right. Yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely an ordeal, though. Mm-hmm. It was very interesting, to say the least. I had a lot of fun with it. This, the next part, though, after we finally get it to work, and like, oh. There we go. I think, I think this is when we were satisfied. Yeah, we're looking up and down. Yeah, because I also needed to clean up some of the edges, because I was mm-hmm. like, oh no. My arm is a little wonky. Yeah, you start changing the Ugh. color on it, or yeah. what is it, the intensity, opacity, or something. Uh, the levels. Levels. Whatever the word is. It's levels. Your fancy art terminology. Levels slash curves. Yeah. yeah. Now we got a beautiful lady there. Yeah. Lady. Lady. <laughs> and that's just, yeah, me going around with the white, trying to clean up everything. Mm-hmm. Some of the leftover artifacts and yeah. stuff from the scanner and things yep. like that. And uh, making sure that the watercolor itself doesn't look too, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know, like kind of choppy. Yeah, we're getting rid of some of these edges too, like on that spirit hand. I think mm-hmm. that ends up being erased. Yeah, it does. Same with on the dress there and the little, the little yeah. sleeves. Yeah, I I usually just keep hitting you until you erase everything that I want erased. <laughs> you gotta hit them. Artists are like that. They don't want to do anything. Okay, Oscar. You gotta look up the. Uh, there's a magic card that's like the. It's a from the first unset where yeah. it's like the evil art director or yeah. something like that. <laughs> that's me. I was just thinking you're like my Oscar, you know, because Shinji needs Oscar. Oh my God, no! Oh, I hate that. Oh no! I know someone whose favorite even going character is Oscar because I think Shinji needs to get whipped into shape. <laughs> just like that's not what he needed. That's not what he needed. That's not what that boy needed. And then this is the actual annoying part, uh, and I think about it. I think this was the most frustrating part, is, um, uh, yeah, this. Yeah, when you've got to go all around it. And erase every yep. single thing, because mm-hmm. it needs a background. <laughs> yeah, right. And the 
you gotta go in and erase it on the other stuff. And this is like, this is death doomed to happen every single time. But you know, I'm used, mm-hmm. I still get annoyed by it every every time I do it. Yeah, it's a good bit of erasing, but yeah. it's kind of cool to see the stuff like in computers behind it. Mm-hmm, for sure, but uh, it's like. It's only, the only reason I remember this one being particularly tedious is because I kept, like, you know, like, select, delete, and then it would delete everything, and I was like, yeah. what the heck is it still touching? <laughs> like, yes, oh, I remember that. It's somewhere later. It's, like, towards the end yeah, of the owls, I think. Yeah, it's towards the end of the owls, where I'll be like, what am I still touching? What, yeah. what pixel am where I still is on? is that? The magic pixel floating around. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, you too can suffer. <laughs> is, suffer so. as I suffer. Suffer. Watch me suffer. Oh. Um, I feel like our vi- our videos are a lot more popular every time I suffer. Oh, it's true. I feel like everyone loves watching people suffer because it makes them feel about how their eye, their lives are, you know, you know, yeah. so much nicer. Well, that's why Lifetime movies are great. Whenever the woman gets beat, you're like, oh, at least I'm not getting beat. I remember a bunch of comedians would say that in the nineties oh, about all those Lifetime Channel oh movies. Oh god, I forgot about those. It's been so long since I've seen. There's them. a Jim Gaffigan one about that where he's like, on this month on Lifetime, Meredith Baxter gets beaten with a rod. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, this is the first attempt at me figuring out why the fuck do I still keep losing it? Yeah. Uh, and I was like, oh, it's probably wherever these black lines are. Because mm-hmm. some of the lines are thick. And you're like, oh, there it is. Hey, you got part of her. There's a face. Yeah, she's like, I'm almost free. Yeah. <laughs> Don't mind me. Don't mind me. You're just, you know, being a witch. And witch is such a negative term. All right. I prefer magic user. I don't know. I got nothing. Uh, we'll, we'll find a better word. We'll uh, we'll fit. We'll, we'll we'll send it to a few focus groups. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go from there. Yeah. Yeah, this is where I remember having the most trouble. Being like, where the fuck is it? Yeah, yeah. There definitely was a part where you just kept like clicking shit, and you're just infuriated. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, for, I for some reason remember it being in a really dumb spot too, and I can't mm-hmm. remember where right at this point. But I just remember being really dumb and being really mad at myself. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, and also, the, uh, this is, I think, where I was realizing our graphics, the graphics card on my computer is not doing too well, mm-hmm. because you would randomly sometimes look far away, and then the, there would be a um, white uh, border around the whole thing, and I'm like, I'm not deleting that, am I? Yeah, that border that's on the edge. Yeah, yeah. Because that doesn't show up in the picture. No, it doesn't. But it's so, there on screen for some reason. Yeah, I was really confused by that. And uh, this is the day when I, stopped, I started saying that my graphics card was not working right or something like that. Yeah. And then this is, yeah, you, you see me, I'm like, all right, and delete. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. Why am I still selecting this? There we go. Hey. Yeah, it's still, I was confused by that. See, I can see that little white line there? Yeah. It's not it actually not there. And I, I tried to, like, fill it in with the, the marker at one point and be like, hey, why is this doing this? Yeah, I think you just saved and exited out at one point. Yeah. And it went away. Uh, yeah, I have no clue. It's, uh... Yeah. Right. Uh, my computer's pretty old, comparatively, I guess. Uh, what? I got this thing in 2016, 2015? Yeah. I think 2015. So, you know, five years now. Mm-hmm. That's so weird that that's apparently old for a computer, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, that's just how it goes. Yeah. Technology moves much, so much faster these days. Right. Just smoking like a true old man. Oh, obviously. I'm about to go yell at some clouds when we're done recording this. <laughs> Catch me at the park yelling at clouds. <laughs> Fight me IRL. Isn't it, aren't, isn't Simpsons reference too old? Exactly. Oh, man. Oh, no. Referencing the Simpsons is no longer hip and young. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sometimes, that's probably why I'm sitting is because I'm just an old man. Oh, my God. America is so obsessed with me. Culture, it's ridiculous. It is. You can't you can't be old when you're thirty if you live to a hundred, right? It's so yeah. weird. Yeah, exactly. You think it's bad now? Wait until people are like becoming cyborgs to live forever. Just go watch uh, Galaxy Express three nine. There's a lot of stuff about that in there. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny when you said Galaxy. I was like, we're gonna go watch Galaxy Quest. <laughs> oh my god, that's a very different film. <laughs> it's a way different film. <laughs> it's a much different meaning. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's such a that's a silly film too. That is a good one though. Some of Tim Allen's best. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's really weird thinking about that. America is also very much about no second chances. 
Which, to be fair, some people really don't deserve second chances, but, like, uh, it's, it's interesting, uh, America as a culture, uh, as opposed to other cultures or things of that nature. It also goes into the idea of fantasy as well, um, when you try to grab from other cultures and you start seeing other, um, uh, what's the word, um, ideas and things like that. Mm-hmm. And this is me trying to figure this out. This is when we get the backgrounds. Yes. And then I, a genius, chose the perfect one. Which should is come up soon. Soon rather than later. Yeah. It's somewhere. We're looking through the folder right now. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah, because I remember we're like, oh, let's see what this one is. I was like, one of this with the sun. And there it is. That one. That yeah. was the one. Yeah. So we went through them. This um, one. This right is here. the one we ended up choosing uh, because Wes is a genius. Because I'm a goddamn Tetris master, so I could spin everything in my head. Yeah, and then this is me like messing around with it, making yeah, sure. Yeah, this is him making it good. Yeah. Because we kind of wanted it to go with the the horror lines, yeah. the like weird menacing horror you added at yeah. the bottom. Yeah, and then it does this nonsense. Thing. And this was when the graphics card was starting to freak out again too. Yeah, but it's also you're chopping off his feathers and stuff too. Yeah, yeah, and then you shift it to be a better blue to go. Yeah, it goes to the blue that the background has. Mm-hmm. And I was like looking through the stuff. It's like that's a texture. I didn't really want it. But I like that. Because I really like the uh, colors that it has from the blues mm-hmm. and the reds and the greens. To yeah. kind of give it like this weird stained glass effect. Uh, if I remember, isn't that the same texture, the tarot card box? Uh, yes, I use this one a lot, actually. Yeah. This one along with the... Um, uh, you painted the... this, right? What? Did you paint this one? I've yeah. Seen, yeah, I've seen similar. some of those I've seen actual ones for. Yeah, I painted it all. Uh, all of the watercolor ones I painted and all the ever ones I did the marvelous paper Yeah. Um, the other one that was the, the coffee filter one is the yeah. one that gets a lot of mileage. Coffee filter, yeah. Yeah, so this is, I think... Um, I like how the red looks like it's glowing. Yeah. It even looks like that on the print. It's got, like, some shine on it. That's because I used a specific channel uh, layer for that. I can't remember oh, what, really? what it was called. With the, I can't remember what it was. I don't think it was overlay. Hmm. But overlay usually tends to make things glow. That's why I assume it's overlay, but I, I, I couldn't tell you. Yeah. Um, I think it's about to end now, it looks like. Well, yeah, because now I'm going over, as you can see, I'm doing a lot of, like, like purple mm-hmm. in the multiply layer to kind of add, to make it so that the picture itself kind of blends into the background a bit better. Because mm-hmm. right now, it was I felt it was, like, a little bit too stark of a contrast. Yeah. And, well, then, and we're done. And we're done. And we're done, just like that. Um, but, yeah, no, the, uh, I like the, um, I wanted to add the digital stuff to make it so that it's not too stark yeah. uh, imagery, so that it kind of helped it blend together a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, it's... I don't know. I feel like uh, that's one of the things I try to do when I really do collage work is um, whilst uh, you want to showcase that there is definitely different textures, different things going on, um, all that good stuff, you want to also make sure that they blend together in a way that's seamless, cohesive, and doesn't really distract from what's going on in the image. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, I think it came out great. Yes, I'm very proud of this one. This is definitely like one of your best pieces. I've I've definitely caught myself staring at it. <laughs> uh, I find it to be a very soothing piece too. I think it's the blues and the fact, like as I said, the yeah. character design of herself is very soft. Mm-hmm. No real sharp edges on this piece. Yeah. Uh, uh, even the sharp edges on the crown have like, go into a curve mm-hmm. uh, in some fashion. Um, yeah, it's just overall very. Uh, serene kind of yeah i really like the way the blue king. makes this cool aura yeah in the back definitely it's really sweet i'm very in uh very mm-hmm. very I, I can't i feel like we need to get you know what we need to get for like a cool aura you know that like 80s uh fist of the north star lightning yeah that like kind of just like comes off of people yeah we need to do that because that's like the best anime lightning ever no, that's true but yeah no I'm, I'm very happy with this piece um it's kind of rare for me to be like look at a piece after, uh, gosh, I finished this like early, early in the month, and yeah, uh, now I'm looking at it again. I'm like, not nah, still good, it's still amazing, still pretty, you know. Yeah, it's uh, great. The artists have a really bad problem of looking at old pieces and they're like, ah, it's okay, but here's yeah, the next problem, good. here's why yeah. problem. This one I'm gonna throw it in the fire. Real this quick. one I still have no, uh, I haven't really looked at it deeply enough to be like. Yeah. This is, look at all these fucking mess-ups. Look at this problem. Yeah, I can't even remember what I saw in the picture that was, like, slightly off. I think maybe the owl eyes, some of them have a little white in them. Yeah. But that doesn't even matter because it still looks cool. It's, like, so tiny. Yeah, it is weird. There's, like, almost no errors in this. Yeah. That we know of yet. Yeah, exactly. Feel free to point them out. Yeah, obviously. Obviously point them out. That's what the comment section is for. (laughs) Right. Oh man! But Burn this man! Roast this man's art! He's feeling good. Roast him! Yeah, right. No, don't ever let me feel good about myself. I don't want to have a good. I don't want to get a big ego and suddenly say something I shouldn't like. Right. Be like, 
I'm really good. <laughs> you know, that's that's what I never want to hear myself say. <laughs> Because if I say it, then that means it's like, oh no, look at this guy over here. He feels good about himself. Right. Obviously, he's a cocky prick and we need to hate him now. Right. Let's oh, man. Tear him down. I him. think it's time to wind this down. We're at about like 50 minutes almost. So. Yeah, again, we're going to be, uh, I guess, the usual. Uh, yeah, we're heading to C2E2 in two weeks, I think now. It's about two, two weeks. weeks yeah. yeah, two weeks even. And this will be there. Yep. Um, Along with some of the other new original pieces. Uh, the Raven Queen, the uh, Sun piece will also be there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm really excited to go to a more uh, comic seat convention. This is probably the biggest convention we've been to. This is definitely the biggest uh, convention in terms we've of ever been to. Uh, in terms of attendance. attendance. Um, yeah. Size wise, we've been to some pretty big ones too, but the attendance is never nearly as big as what yeah. the C2E2 promises. So it'll so, be really cool. Yeah, we're interested to see what all uh, the crowds are going to be like. We haven't really, uh, I, I haven't been in Chicago in quite a while. Uh, I usually, whenever I went to Chicago or the Illinois area, was to visit family, so mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to go more as a vendor. Uh, yeah, um, yeah Chicago's so. cool. I'll take you to some cool uh, food places. Uh, okay, yeah, we'll see if we can get away. Yeah, tonight. I don't, because uh, I, I can't remember where exactly we're at in Chicago, but uh, if if I get the general idea, I can figure out what mm -hmm. some of the good food joints are. They're still there. It's been a while. You're right. Usually, but Chicago food joints don't usually tend to go away. I'll, I'll, I'll treat you some deep dish. Okay. Okay, I'm in. Yeah. All right, well, we will see you all at C2E2. We'll see you in the next video, and I appreciate you all for coming by. Yeah, thanks for stopping in. All Have right. a great day. See you.